John Cola with OKRaw.com to do another exciting episode for you. And I'm somewhere I've never been before in my entire life. I'm here inside a freeze dryer warehouse and they have all the freeze dryers that they're quality control testing before they ship them out. And where I'm at today is Stay Fresh Freeze Dryer Company. They have a little sign here and you can see all the freeze dryers here that they've been testing before they ship out. And I want to introduce you guys to the concept of freeze drying. What is freeze drying? Why is it better than dehydration that I know most of you guys watching are using? I no longer recommend dehydration. The problem with dehydration is the problem of oxidation. Do you guys know that I promote vacuum blending? Some of you guys have adopted vacuum blending and some of you guys won't. Some of you guys will adopt freeze drying like I will be adopting freeze drying and some of you guys won't. For those of you guys that nutrition is paramount and you believe in the power of the plants and the plant foods and you want to maintain the most amount of these plant phytochemicals, phytonutrients and oxygen sensitive vitamins and more importantly you love better flavors and tastes and better food textures and you miss the crunch of potato chips, right? You could get potato like crunch chips made in the freeze dryer but you can't do that in a dehydrator. In a dehydrator, things collapse and they get chewy. In a freeze dryer, they actually get crunchy, right? And you could freeze dry things that you can't dehydrate. For example, we're gonna show you guys some avocados in a minute that look pretty much just like when you put them in that can store for 15 to 20 years, whereas dehydrated food could maybe store for one to five years, maybe depending on what it is. The challenge with dehydration is twofold. Number one, you're not removing a significant amount of moisture content. The food, yes, can still spoil. Maybe you're removing 70 to 80% of the moisture content in dehydrated foods. Meanwhile, a freeze dryer such as a Stay Fresh can remove up to 97, maybe 99, up to 99% of the moisture. So there's very little moisture left so that the food does not go bad. And here's a published study that I wanna show you guys real quick. And this is why I really don't like dehydration anymore. All right, this is the, the study is, I'll put a link down below to, the, to it. Impact of three different dehydration methods on nutritional values and sensory quality of, de, of dried broccoli, oranges, and carrots. And we're gonna throw this slide up. I know you may not be able to see that, but we'll throw it, we'll throw the picture up on the screen right now. And you guys can see, this is the different drying treatment. So say fresh, freeze dried, and they used a uh, Rev dried, which is a, uh, different kind of microwave vacuum drying, and then here's just air dried. So this is the vitamin C retention. All right, fresh vitamin C retention in something fresh, 100% obviously, it's fresh. When you freeze dry it, you can see the percentage, man, it's almost as much as fresh. Once you start using the Rev drying, okay, the Rev drying was, was definitely pretty good. It's not quite as much as freeze drying, a little bit less. But then if you go to air dried or dehydrated, look at that, it, you get a significant lowering of the vitamin C, and vitamin C is one of the many nutrients in food. Another one that's even more important than vitamin C, in my opinion, is the beta carotene. Beta carotene has been associated with being anti-cancer, and you know, the more beta carotene you could get into, that's why I love juicing so much. Juicing is an excellent way to flood your body and your, and your blood with beta carotene. You can see here's fresh beta carotene in carrots, 100%. Let's check out freeze drying. How much beta carotene does freeze drying keep? Man, it's like almost 100%, maybe it's like 99%, 97, almost as much. You go to Rev drying, which like only kept 40%, and now you go to just standard dehydration, air dried. What do you got? 20% of the beta carotene left. But yet, everybody in raw food say, oh, as long as 118 or below, it's alive. It's still raw because you didn't heat it too much. But you're killing the freaking beta carotene. That's just what they studied in this study. What about all the different lycopenes and all the different phytonutrients, you know? You're, you're losing them significantly, why? Because you're blowing warm air, right? You're oxidizing the food with the heat source that's happening for a long period of time. This lowers the oxygen sensitive phytonutrients. That's why I recommend vacuum blending. And that's why I now recommend you guys Vacuum freeze drying. Vacuum freeze drying is done under a vacuum so there's not the oxidative damage. And that's why these studies show it keeps more nutrition 
almost as good as fresh. Now, yes, you are losing the water, so I'm not gonna say eat only freeze-dried food. Eat fresh food by all means, but some of you guys may travel. Some of you guys wanna have different food textures. That's where freeze-drying could come in to basically give you almost as good as fresh. And actually, that's why this company is called Stay Fresh, because it's gonna keep your food fresh for 15 to 25 years when stored properly in a Mylar bag without the moisture content. So in case another pandemic happens and all the stores close down, in case World War III happens, you could have a supply of food that you're storing. Or in case you're somebody that goes camping or you have a huge garden that produces in the summertime and then in the winter time, you're in Canada and there's snow outside, you could preserve your harvest. And then actually, I'm gonna show you guys how you could rehydrate it with water and it's almost just like it was fresh. I mean, dude, freeze drying is the next best thing. So what I'm gonna tell you guys is this, the Stay Fresh freeze dryer is the best one out there. And I'm gonna say that this is the only one I recommend, right? That's what I'm gonna tell you guys. And in this video, because I'm ending up at the warehouse and we spent several hours with the owner himself, the gentleman that does all the customer service, right? He doesn't pawn this off to some kind of staff that he trained. If you have a problem with this machine, you're gonna to talk to Tim, the guy that I talked to for the last probably like several hours here, learning every element of this machine. And I'm gonna share that with you guys in this video so that you have a good understanding of not only freeze-dried food, but also why this machine is the best you know, because I research all the different machines out there and juicers and vacuum blenders, and I know why this is the best, and I'm gonna prove it to you guys in this video. So let's come along the journey and teach you guys more about freeze-dried food and the Stay Fresh freeze-dryer. All right, so this is what you guys normally aren't gonna see. This is like the inner guts of the freeze-dryer, and I'm not gonna show you guys this right now because you guys probably don't even know how a freeze-dryer works. So that's what I wanna do is take you guys back and show you guys a working freeze-dryer that they have here and share with you guys more about the freeze-dried food and how you could use the food and how amazing the freeze-dried food is. So let's come back to this unit that's been running. So the freeze-dryer, yes, they are a lot larger than a dehydrator. Dehydrator is a very simple unit, and in my opinion, dehydrators are just overpriced for what they are. Dehydrator is simply some trays with a heating element in the back and a fan. It's really stupid, in my opinion, and they charge stupid prices for some of these dehydrators that are like $500 made out of plastic. Some of them aren't even made in the US anymore. And I mean, yes, they're great because they have a 10 year warranty, but they're very simple devices. A fan, a heating element, it blows the fan. It keeps the air at a certain temperature. If it's even good at doing that, some, some machines don't. And the freeze dryer guys is a lot more complex because it's not just a fan and it's not just the heating element. It has so many more components. Number one, you have a vacuum pump. The vacuum pump is what pulls the vacuum. It, suck, it sucks the oxygen out of this chamber. So now when the food is drying, you're drying in an oxygen deprived environment. It gets down, it gets down to like, you know, as low as 200 mTOR, which you guys gotta look up what that means. But that's very, that's very, that's, there's a lot, a lot of oxygen removed out of that situation, even better than any vacuum blender that you guys have ever seen. So that's the oxygen deprived. And as it's in an oxygen deprived environment, it slowly heats up the trays as the whole chamber is frozen to up to minus 50 degrees in this machine. So under vacuum, right? When they're heating up the trays a little bit, the moisture literally sublimates, right? Or literally just comes out of the food, right? Under vacuum, water can only be in two things. It could either be solid or it could be gas, it can't be liquid. And that is the magic of freeze drying. So they lower the chamber temperature because it has a full on compressor down here like, like they'd be in your refrigerator. What happens is they cool the whole chamber with that compressor. And then these trays, you can see the like the little liners on the bottom of the trays, they gently heat, right? That the, the operand word is gently heat. In this case, the machine is preset from the factory to never get hotter than 120. Now I know what some of you hardcore raw fooders are saying, but John, the machine's getting to 120. It's heating my food up too hot, two, two degrees more than the 118. It doesn't matter because this is the only machine in the world at present time that has a temperature probe that actually you stick into the food to make sure it's under 118 or whatever you want it to be. In this case, if you have this, if the trays are set to 120, the temperature probe will never get above 110. So your food always stays raw. And in my opinion, 
The freeze dryer makes food more raw than a dehydrator because dehydrator, you get all the oxidative damage. This is being done in an oxygen deprived situation. So let me go back to the story. So under vacuum, right? Water cannot be liquid. It could only be solid or in a gas form. So what happens under vacuum as they heat the tray up, the water sublimates or comes out of the food into a gas, right? Like think clouds, think fog in the chamber and then recondenses to the walls of the, of the freeze dryer as ice. And then so at the end of the freeze dry process, you have your food that's dry and you have a chamber that's full of ice that then you defrost at the end that then melts. You then could collect that water. You could technically drink that water because literally that water is one of the purest waters on earth because it's literally the water extracted from your fruits and vegetables or whatever else you're freeze drying. And that's like the purest water. So it's just the water from the fruits and vegetables. Instead of like in a dehydrator, you evaporate that off and it goes into your, you know, into your kitchen. It gets your cabinets moist, gets things moist. In this case, it's collected. You could collect it. You could drink it if you feel, you know, that you want to do that. Or you could, I pour it on my plants and I water my plants with water from their cousins, their plant cousins, their fruits and vegetables, right? If you want to do that too. And then you have the finished product that you could then take out, put in a Mylar bag and store for up to 25 years properly. So this machine, oh no, here's the other thing. The freeze drying process, number one, it takes a lot longer than dehydration. Dehydration could be done in 12 to 24 hours, depending on what you're dehydrating. The freeze drying process on the other hand could take about double that or even triple in some cases, depending on what you're freeze drying. The higher the water content of the food, so think watermelon is gonna take a lot longer than something like avocado that you can't even dehydrate because the dehydrator would turn black. That could take maybe, in this case, this, this batch is running about 30 hours for the complete cycle time to be completely finished. All right, so the other thing that you guys have when you guys are running the freeze dryers that you're gonna hear the, the machine has a compressor that you don't really hear too much, but you will hear the pump. So this pump is running constantly throughout the whole process. Unlike a dehydrator, you have a fan, depending on the dehydrator, a fan could be quiet or not. I mean, this pump is definitely fairly quiet. I'll say it's louder than a, you know, dehydrator for sure. Since this is done, we're just gonna go ahead and manually stop it. We turn it off and you can hear now the um, compressor on the unit is freezing. Oh, I think it just turned off. And now we're gonna open, we're gonna basically open the valve to release the pressure. You can hear all the pressure releasing because it's under vacuum, so we're releasing the vacuum pressure. So it's being done in an oxygen deprived environment. All right, once we release the pressure, now we could open the door. And check this out, guys. This is amazing, right? You guys have all had sun-dried tomatoes. We're gonna pull out this tray. This is a tray of basically beefsteak tomatoes that have been sliced and freeze-dried. Look at that. It looks just like the pink tomato because they're purchased from the store that went in. And the amazing thing about freeze-dried food is check this out. You hear that snap, you hear the crack. This is crispy as a potato chip. You can crunch on them. And the food flavor is intensified. You know, because you remove the water, all the flavors are intensified. Even the worst tomato you ever tasted now tastes better freeze dry because you're removing the water that normally dilutes the flavor. Incredible. You could, so like if you have a problem gaining weight on raw foods, freeze dry your foods, you're increasing the caloric content because you're removing the water and you can eat a lot more freeze dried tomatoes <laughs> than you can fresh. And that was a problem I had freeze drying fruits and I was eating too many freeze-dried fruits, which was not a healthy thing. <laughs> but the other thing I like to do with freeze-dried tomatoes, because the flavor is intensified, I could blend fresh tomatoes or even tomato juice with freeze-dried tomatoes and make the most kick-ass tomato sauce you've never made because now the flavors are intensified because now you're putting in concentrated tomatoes and this even increases the nutrition because now you retain more of the nutrition and you could eat these and eat a lot, get a lot more in you. Now I know some raw foods will say, you don't need to eat more nutrition, you just need the nutrition. The problem is the tomatoes don't have the lycopene or the nutrition content that they did even 50 years ago due to the industrial farming practices that are, that are basically farming for profit, not for nutrition. So that's the tomatoes coming out. Next coming out, check this out, apples. So you guys know when you dehydrate apples and you have you know, dehydrated apples, they turn brown. Yeah, there's a little browning. I'm not gonna say there isn't, but look at this. You can take out the apples and check this out. Snap it, right? These, these crunch. 
when you eat them. Once again, the flavor's intensified. You could make these into like an apple pie, right? Blend this with some fresh apples, some dates, have a nice pie filling. Amazing. Let's see, we're gonna pull out papaya. Have you ever tried to dehydrate papaya? They flatten, they turn, you know, a brown color. They're all chewy, they're just hard, they're just not good. This is freeze dried papaya. Nice little wedges there. Once again, you can take these and snap them. Nice and crisp, we could chew on them. Really crunchy. Man, the papayas in the US, the quality's not that good, so they never really taste that good. But these, but on these, the flavor, once again, is intensified, right? Makes things taste super good. I mean, the, if you have fruit that's, not, that's going bad, before it goes bad, you can freeze dry it, so you preserve it in the state it is in. This stuff's super amazing. Way different than any kind of dehydrated food you ever tasted. And uh, the other thing I'm gonna tell you guys straight up, honestly, right now, is freeze dryers are not cheap. Dehydrators are cheap, right? The technology has been out forever. Freeze dryer, there's so many different components in there. These machines are not cheap, guys. Like, this is like under $3,000. So it is definitely not for everybody. But if you guys have all the latest gadgets and gizmos, you wanna take your health to the next level, you wanna prepare for the next pandemic and have food storage and have a closet full of food so that in case the world has no food because everything shuts down, you're still gonna be safe. You wanna, you do backpacking, hiking trips, or you wanna, the weight is, is super important on how much you carry with you. This reduces the water content, makes the, the weight of these are like nothing. I mean, they take freeze dried food to the space station for the astronauts to eat. They take this for hikers and backpackers because it reduces the, the weight the most of any food on earth and concentrates the nutrients. That's where I'm at. Now, this is the most important thing that, we, that was freeze dried this round. Avocados. You guys ever tried to dehydrate avocados? They turn black, they compress. I mean, these avocados almost look like they're fresh. I mean, you probably, guys probably can't even see these like, oh, John, that just looks like a sliced avocado that's fresh. No, this is totally dry. So here's the avocado. I want you guys to hear this. You guys hear that snap? Snap. And now when you eat this, not super crunchy because there's a the higher fat content and not everything can be freeze dried. Can't freeze dry oil because there's no water content. Nuts, not really eat good to freeze dry on their own. But if you like blend nuts into a sauce and put it on like kale chips or make a salad and you could freeze dry your salad, super delicious. The cool thing about freeze dry food is, while I just like to use it fresh, you could also reconstitute it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that with the avocado right now. So the normal way you guys would reconstitute freeze dried food is you're just gonna have like a bowl or a glass of water. I have a mason jar here. And you basically just take the food and put it in the water and you would let it sit for a while so that it would absorb the water back because once again, you know, 97 to 99% of the water was removed by the freeze drying process. And so now we're gonna add the water back because eating dehydrated food, I don't care if it's dehydrated, I don't care if it's freeze dried where you remove a lot of the moisture and you eat that food will dehydrate you. So I encourage you guys, if you guys eat the freeze dried food, drink water with it, drink some juice before it, even better would be to like reconstitute this in the juice so like we could make apple juice and then reconstitute the apples in apple juice, which would like blow your mind. I like to eat the freeze dried food, just dry and drink water. But of course you could reconstitute it if you want to use it fresh. You could just take this and mash it up in a bowl and then add water and add onions and things. And you could have a guacamole fresh, amazing. But even to reconstitute even better, you want to do it under vacuum in the water so it'll force the water into the food even faster. So I got my standard vacuum lid. Once again, link down below to my Amazon shop to buy the vacuum lids and the vacuum pump. So we're just gonna put this under vacuum and force the water into the avocado to reconstitute even faster. So normally to reconstitute something may take 10 minutes if you're just soaking in water under vacuum, it might take a little bit less. So while this is reconstituting, which normally could take 10 minutes in just a bowl of water, it's gonna be reduced a little bit. I wanna to talk to you guys more about the Stay Fresh freeze dryer and why, it's, why it is the best freeze dryer 
on the market. And if you guys wanna buy a Stay Fresh freeze dryer, of course, I'm gonna hook you guys up with the discount code. The discount code is OKRAW. That's gonna save you guys $50 off the Stay Fresh freeze dryer. And if you guys wanna learn more about it on their website, uh, I'll put the link down below in the description to Stay Fresh, and as well as my coupon code OKRAW to save $50 off. Now, I know $3,000, what it's selling for at the time this video is being made, hopefully it comes down in the future, um, is a lot of money, but they also have payment programs. You could put it on a credit card. You could use like an Affirm payment program and pay it off over time. It, you know, it's one of the best investments, in my opinion, you could make for your health to preserve your food better than dehydration, preserves more nutrition, and also save your food for a rainy day when you might need it. Save it for traveling, so to take freeze-dried food on the airplane, for example, or on car trips, so you don't have to go out and constantly be worried about buying food. You could make your salad, you would eat at home, you could freeze-dry it, you could freeze-dry you know, your raw pizzas, your cooked pizzas, you could freeze-dry, you could make your own freeze-dried treats and dog food for your pets. You know, the freeze-drying is one amazing appliance. So let's learn why the Stay Fresh freeze dryer is the best one out there. So this is what truly sets the Stay Fresh freeze dryer apart, in my opinion, because all the freeze dryers are basically the same components, right? They're all set up the same, but every freeze dryer is a little bit different in the programming, which we'll talk about, as well as the build quality, which we're gonna talk about. But what really is cool about this machine is that it has a temperature probe, so it monitors the temperature, and you could run the machine you know, if you use a temperature probe, like you should be if you're into your health and maximizing nutrition, so the freeze dryer runs more optimally, or if you don't wanna deal with the temperature probe, you can just run it without the temperature probe. It is up to you. They give you the option to use it or not use it. I encourage you guys to always use it uh, because you have it and you could make sure the freeze dryer runs more optimally and more importantly, for those of you guys that are concerned about the temperature of your food and the quality of your food, you can see the temperature of the probe instantly on the screen for the full cycle during the whole freeze drying run to ensure that it doesn't get above, right, 118 or whatever, you know, temperature you believe to be important, right? So here's how it works, right? You literally just stick this probe into the food. You guys can see the probe is just stuck in to the papaya. So during the whole process, it is monitoring the temperature of the food. The temperature inside the freeze dryer is not as critical as the food temperature because, you know, even in dehydrators, no dehydrator senses the temperature of the food. It's always the air temperature inside the machine that is not the same as a food temperature. So for raw people that are, the food temperature is critical. This is the only machine on the market that dries your food and you test the temperature the entire process. And then they use the data that this meter, you know, uh, brings into the machine to basically uh, determines how the machine runs and how it dries and if it's fully completed or not. So this machine is going to be more accurate than other machines that don't test the food temperature. So critical. And when you're done, of course, I mean, you have a you have a you know piece that has some that has a hole in it, but that's all right. <laughs> Tastes good as all the other pieces. All right, so that's the first thing that sets it apart, the included food probe that comes with every single machine. This is not an option you could get, you know, to get it or not get it, you will get it automatically. Whether you use it or not is up to you. When you start the freeze drying process, you could, you know, tell it, use the probe or don't use a probe. I encourage you guys to always use the probe. Now the next features of what makes this machine better than all the other ones out there is on the guts of the machine and the build quality. That's super important. If you have a machine that is not built properly, it's gonna fail prematurely, it's gonna give you problems. And so now, because I am in the warehouse here and they do quality control testing of every machine that comes in the door before it goes out, uh, multi-point checks to make sure every different system works and they'd run a mini batch, simulating a mini batch that was in there to make sure that the compressor works that the chamber cools down to make sure that the heating elements work on every single tray to make sure that the, um, you know, the vacuum is holding a vacuum and the seals are proper and everything. So let's go ahead and uh, look in one of the machines that's already open that they're doing testing on, not only visual testing, but I wanna show you guys the, how clean the inside of the machine looks and the high quality parts they use that are not used on other brands. All right, so this is the guts of inside the machine. So what you're looking at, this is basically the vacuum chamber. It's fully wrapped and insulated in a nice insulation. 
This is actually the temper one of the temperature pros for the chamber because they, they get temperature from several areas. This is the compressor. This is what basically keeps the chamber cold. And this is actually um, from a Cuba gel. And they're actually, they're a Spanish company. So high quality. You can see this is where the, you drain out the water. When you're done, it's all stainless steel and has a nice little rake on it. So the water drains out uh, evenly. And then also too, up in the top, you can see these are all the components, right? They're modular components. So they're very easy to work on, easy to change should you need to do that. You can see the wiring harness is all just really clean and tight. They're just not all hanging everywhere. It's in a loom. And uh, at the factory, before it goes out to every customer, they check to make sure every one of these screws is tight. So there's gonna be a good connection. Um, to show you guys just a brief overview, this board is like the main brains. It's a CPU board that does all the controlling. Of course, you have a little LED screen here that displays everything in the front. Next here, you go to the relay board that basically these relays help control some of the different features, kicking things on, kicking things off, such as the compressor, such as uh, the vacuum pump. And the cool thing about these is that you could just basically turn this and you could unplug each one of these relays separately. So should one fail, right? It's not soldered to the board. You could just pull it out and then you could put it back in, clip it in place. So this makes it a lot more user serviceable should you have a failure. In addition, this is a power supply, right? It's not some proprietary power supply. It's a standard power supply that you may even see in some desktop computers or something like that. I use power supplies like this when I would build video games when I worked at a arcade back in the day, right? So you could easily just, uh, you know, remove these with four screws, replace it should you need to. These things are very easy to work on because it just laid out really nice. Here are some of the different temperature sensors. You can see the, you know, the plugs come in. Everything is labeled clearly, so it makes it easier to work on. These are the temperature sensors, three of them that you could basically remove should one fail. And then more importantly, they have a solid state relay right here, unlike the old school ones. And this one is for the most important, the heater trays that, that, that use a lot more current. So it's not as likely to fail as the standard relays that may appear on other machines. Going over to this side, this is a really important side here. This is the main component of the whole freeze dryer. This is called the vacuum sensor. Uh, you know, and this basically, they test the vacuum on the machine to determine the programming in the machine and how it's gonna dry your food or not. This is the most important component. And unlike some other machines that may be difficult to remove, they use these special stainless steel tri-clamps that are just easy to uh, twist off. I mean, all stainless steel, guys. All the piping in here is all stainless steel. And you just remove this, and now you can just easily remove and replace this sensor. They have nice fittings that have nice seals, so you're not going to get vacuum leaks. So the other thing they have is an automatic ball valve controller that's right here at the end of the drying cycle so that you don't lose the vacuum inside the chamber. You can retain the coldness. This cuts on, so it cuts, it isolates the vacuum pump so you don't have leaks from this hose going to the vacuum pump. And of course, you also have another uh, valve over here. And this is where the vacuum pump hooks up. And this is where you, when you're done, you repressurize the chamber by turning this vacuum valve at the top. So you're not gonna suck any moisture into the chamber that could ruin your batch. So another thing I learned about State Fresh is that they are making rolling improvements to their machines. As they learn of any challenges that come up, people are having problems and things that are not so good, they'll be like, okay, factory, you know, when you guys make them, do this instead, because we could I, we could make our machine better, right? So you're not gonna have problems with it. So one, I mean, one small example is, hey, we could make more effective cooling from the machine because we have a grate, this is the grates, this is the original grate that came out, right? They're a little bit smaller grates, and now if you look at the new one, right, there's much more larger grates, so you have improved airflow and improved cooling. They've done a number of other different small improvements, including, you know, polishing the inside of the chamber, having dual welds. So they weld on the outside and they also weld on the inside. And they've done a lot of little small things to improve the machine over time instead of just putting it out and then having people have problems. They wanna prevent problems before they occur. And if they learn of problems, then they're gonna go back to the factory to improve 
continually improve the machine so that the machines that you buy today are gonna be better than the machines that came out a year ago. All right, so now I wanna get back to my uh, reconstituted avocado that's been sitting here. So we're gonna go ahead and let the vacuum off of my, um, my glass. All right, let the air back in. And check out this avocado. You guys saw the size when it went in. It kind of expanded a little bit, got a little bit bigger. And now look at that when I, um, I, 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 I mash it. This stuff is super soft, right? I can smoosh it in my fingers, right? Like an avocado. Mmm, <laughs> tastes like guacamole. <laughs> it's still not reconstituting the exact middle, but you can see these outer stuff. It's soft and mushy, just like a fresh avocado would be. I mean, that is the magic of freeze drying. You could, if you have a dehydrator, man, dehydrate some avocados and try to reconstitute it. It's gonna be black. It's gonna be oxidized. It's not gonna taste good. This just tastes like the avocado when you put in when you put it in the freeze dryer. Just about. How many avocados have you guys had that have gone bad because you couldn't use it? Meanwhile, if you put you know ripe fruit such as avocados or any other fruit or vegetables in the freeze dryer, you basically put it under suspended animation. You basically put it in and it basically stays at the ripeness it was at so you get to enjoy it later, up to 25 years later actually, if you store it properly in the Mylar bags and heat seal them and put an oxygen absorber in there. So I mean, that is really the amazing technology of freeze drying. I think what I wanna do next is actually we're gonna talk about some of the options that the Stay Fresh freeze dryer comes with and uh, you know uh, what I would recommend to you as well as the full package and the items you're gonna get when you get a whole machine. Uh, basically, they truck freight them because they are so heavy. These guys, unlike other machines on the market, are quite heavy. There's 165 pounds for this unit because they use heavy duty components. It's not this cheap stuff that's super light. So the question I wanna answer for you guys real quick is how much food can you freeze dry in one load so that you get four trays, they're this size. And for example, if you're gonna freeze dry your own juice, you could freeze dry sugar cane juice and make your own freeze dry sugar cane juice crystals. You could take carrot juice and make your own freeze dry, you know, carrot juice, right? You could freeze dry your own coconut water and know that there are no additives, right? Because what they're freeze drying it in, or if they're drying it in other things, they might be putting maltodextrin, stray drying it or whatever. So if you're doing like a juice or even trying to freeze dry water, which there'll be nothing left, you could put in an eight pounds. So that's two pounds per tray. You're going to freeze dry avocados. You could get up to 12 pounds. So that's like one and a half pounds per tray of fresh. And then when you freeze dry, you remove the, all the water. So the weight on these are gonna be like nothing. Freeze dried food weighs like nothing. But once again, it's concentrated nutrition because you're removing the water content, preserving the most bioactive oxygen sensitive compounds like the beta carotene and other essential plant phytonutrients for your health. All right, so now I wanna show you guys actually what comes with your Stay Fresh freeze dryer. You guys can see we're in the warehouse and they got basically two different kits you could get. You know, one of the kits wrapped up, ready to go out to a customer. And this, the sad thing is that at present time when this video is being filmed, they have an eight week back order because they can't keep these in stock fast enough. Every one of these machines in this shop here are already pre-spoken for, sold. Anyways, this one's ready to go out. You guys can see this main box is the freeze dryer itself and you get a bunch of accessory boxes including this one has the industrial pump that we'll be showing you guys. And that's the one I recommend for you. And next they have a boxes of the different trays and some of the different accessories you're gonna get. Um, that's more expensive. It's like $700 more expensive approximately. And then this is the standard kit you're gonna get with uh, just the standard freeze dryer with the standard pump and the kit with all the different accessories. So I'm gonna pull this out and show you guys real quick what it comes with. Now, first I'm gonna tell you guys, don't buy a freeze dryer if you don't read instructions. Reading instructions is very important, but especially with a freeze dryer because you have to operate this properly. It is, it is all computer controlled and you have to know how to use it properly for the best results. So they give you an instruction book as well as these little tip pages. And these tip pages are some of the most important pages you wanna read because um, it really tells you some of the essential things on how to set up the freeze dryer. When I get my freeze dryer, I'll be making videos on how to set it up so you guys could have somebody to help you walk through it, but it tells all the different components you get, as well as some of the specifics on how to set it up, and you get a lot of different items in here. So number one, you get an impulse sealer. This impulse sealer is basically gonna heat seal your Mylar bags 
so you can store your food for up to 25 years. Next, you get a few coffee filters and you get a, a filter in here because you gotta, on the standard pump, you have to change the oil or filter the oil every two to three cycles. And you're gonna get the oil filter in here plus some cleaning parts, some Q-tips, a wrench, and some different, you know, uh, funnels and whatnot. This is the drain hose, so when you're done, this connects to the uh, outlet right here to drain out all the water into a bucket. Next, you get the pressure hose. This is very important, guys. When you hook up your vacuum pump, very important to use this hose because it is a reinforced hose. You know, if this hose is not long enough because you want to put the vacuum pump a little bit further away, I recommend you not do that because the longer the hose, it's not as good. But if you need to do that, you need to call them to make sure you get a longer hose don't just like, oh, this is a hose I could just buy at Home Depot because that hose will collapse. It will not freeze dry things as well, but they give you the nice clamps. These are not like screw on. Screw on ones can tend to leak. Clamps, when you clamp it down with these just hand clamps that you turn, they're not gonna leak on you guys. Next up, you get a whole pack of the Mylar bags so you can store your freeze dried food for up to 25 years that you will heat seal. I recommend getting some aftermarket ones that have a zipper seal and then you can heat seal them later and reuse them. You also get a little uh, air pump so that actually you could blow out and fully dry the chamber of your freeze dryer as well as some of the different, you know, um, uh, tubing inside there when you're done. You get a standard uh, IEC electrical cord. And then also the other thing in here, you get a huge vacuum pump. Now this is their base vacuum pump. It's a solid vacuum pump. Um, I don't recommend you guys get this because you got to do a lot more work with this one. You got to change the oil and filter the oil every two to three cycles. I mean, if you don't have the money to buy the industrial pump, this is better than not getting the machine at all, but I highly recommend the industrial pump. So I want to show you guys the comparison between the industrial pump and the standard pump. So now I want to go ahead and compare for you guys the standard pump, which is right here, which is a, the kit I showed you guys. It's pretty light. And as you guys can see, the standard pump is quite small. So it definitely takes up less space. And here's the industrial pump. I mean, this industrial pump was built for industrial commercial use versus maybe this is a more of a home use. So if you want to start a freeze dry business where many people are in freeze dry business by buying a freeze dryer, they freeze dry fruits and vegetables in some of the farmer's market, even people you in freeze dry candy, which is incredible, sad use of a freeze dryer to me because then you could basically take a Jolly Rancher and then it dissolves in your mouth in seconds instead of 20 minutes and you could eat more candy and it hits you with a bigger sugar spike. But I mean, of course, you could freeze dry fruit. Freeze dry fruit to me is like candy because you're getting, you know, <laughs> not as bad as a candy, but it's still a lot of sugar because you're removing the moisture content. But of course, keeping all the fiber, more importantly, keeping the texture. But anyways, this is the industrial pump. They even use this in like the semiconductor industry. It has the standard filter on there. It's lots bigger. It holds a lot more oil and is a lot more heavy. It's not quite as, it's not quite twice as heavy, but you know what? What I want to tell you guys is that you only have to change the oil on this every 30 times. So if you don't mind changing the oil every two to three times and filtering it and putting it back in, you know, this one's going to be a lot less work for you guys. And this is what I'd recommend. Yes, it is $700 more, but it is worth the investment to get the industrial pump that will, you, that will give you many years more of trouble-free service. That's the whole thing. We want this to be a trouble-free experience. Dehydrators basically turn it on and they work. Freeze drying technology is relatively new. This company has been in R&D and started this company five years ago to start developing this machine. And they've come out with it about a year and three or four months ago. And they've already sold so many uh, with so many happy customers and they just came out with this industrial pump actually so i would say get the industrial pump don't screw around yes it is a lot of money but what you're going to get out of the freeze dryer is worth it to preserve the nutrition in the food more importantly preserve your food so you can have it in case you need it whether you want to travel or whether you want to prepare for the next pandemic or whether you just have so much food it's also great to gift or even create your own business and start selling freeze-dried food as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the Stay Fresh Freeze Dryer and more importantly, freeze-drying technology that can now up your nutrition, up your game. And I'll, I wanna sum it up for you guys real quick. So the reason why I like freeze-drying is number one, it does it under vacuum, preserves more nutrition than virtually any other drying method out there. Definitely more nutrition than any other drying method you could do at home, right? Number one, removes the moist moisture content so your food stays fresher longer 
you know, prevents different, you know, mold and, and growth and contamination, right? The more moisture content in your food, the more it could go bad and spoil faster. The freeze dryer also could freeze dry things that you cannot dehydrate, right? You can't dehydrate things like, like avocados, for example, right? You can't easily freeze dry a whole soup or a chili or a salad or a pizza. It's not really going to work. You could do it, but it's going to make something messed up. But in this, it keeps the exact same texture, exact everything. You could then vacuum, Mylar vacuum seal, bag it, and have food to eat later should you need it, whether you want to travel with it or store it for the pandemic, or you just have an overabundance you want to gift to people or send people. You can send them freeze dry food, or maybe you have friends and neighbors that go to the moon or an astronaut. You can take the food to the, for the, to the moon because it's so light. It also preserves the most nutrition. I really love that. And it makes the food weigh a lot less. And more importantly for me, I think one of the most important things is the texture of the food. A lot of people on a raw vegan diet, right? They miss the crunch, right? How do you get crunch? You got to air fry or you got to fry something. So you have a nice crunchy potato chip, for example. Yes, you could eat some jicama that's nice and crunchy, but no other raw food approved way will get the food as crunchy as a freeze dryer, right? So you could still retain the crunch and have amazingly delicious food and still be able to have that crunch if you want to stick to your raw vegan diet. Completely amazing freeze drying technology. If you guys could afford it and it's right for you, I encourage you guys to get one, right? I'll be getting mine probably in maybe five to six weeks. I'll be having an unboxing video and showing you guys how it works, how to set it up. And I'll be doing some amazing things with my freeze dryer, freeze drying my extra soups I make, freeze drying my extra salads I make, freeze drying things from my garden, freeze drying sweet potatoes into potato chips, right? So many things you guys could do with a freeze dryer, preserve the most nutrition, have the most flavor, and have the least moisture content, and store it for the longest amount of time, up to 25 years. So if you guys wanna buy your own Stay Fresh freeze dryer, you wanna visit them at stayfreshfreezedry.com. You use the coupon code OKRAW for a $50 discount. Also, be sure to post your comments and questions down below. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can so you guys could learn more about the amazing Stay Fresh Freeze Dryer, the best freeze dryer that I found. If you guys enjoyed this video at Stay Fresh Freeze Dryer Company Warehouse here, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. More importantly, share this video with other people that are eating a nutrient-dense plant-based raw vegan diet so they can learn about the best preservation technology to store your food, to prevent food waste, and to get greater nutrition in your diet. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my new upcoming episodes. I've come out every five to seven days. You don't know where I show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And I don't want you guys to miss my unboxing of my Stay Fresh uh, freeze dryer to see how I set it up and what I'll be freeze drying at home. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on the channel dedicated to teach you guys about all about the best ways to eat a fruit and vegetable raw-based diet. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keeping your fresh fruits and vegetables the best, especially the freeze-dried ones, they're even better.